Hey guys, welcome back to Status Detail. This is going to be a cool little video on a 720S that has been to a track day, or three actually, I believe. It's been to uh, Blackhawk Farms, I think it went to, and then it went to Road America and Autobahn. It might have just been Autobahn and Road America, I can't remember. Um, but so the car has you know a lot of uh, track day problems on it, right? It's got a lot of rubber all over. You're going to see rubber on the, by the lights there. You're going to see rubber um, all over the hood, and then it's really bad on the front bumper and like some lower back panels, which you'll see in a little bit. Uh, on top of all of that, you're going to see a large amount of bugs all over the place, and um, that's you know something we got to get off the car right away. So. This car only has clear bra on it. I think it's safe to assume it's probably Expel film, but it's uh, uncertain what it really has on it. But it does have some kind of uh, clear bra or paint protection film on the car. It does not have a ceramic coating on the car. Um, we're going to see the, a little bit of a difference between those two things uh, a little bit later in the video, so we'll leave that uh, be for now. But uh, as you can see, there's just a ton of bugs, a ton of rubber on this, and all of that needs to be removed very carefully, um, especially because there's no ceramic on the car. We cannot remove a lot of this easily so you can see all that grit and you know the bug guts and stuff all of that's like a lot of grit and that is the stuff that's going to cause massive problems for us in terms of marring and swirl marks and stuff like that so we have to be very careful as how we remove that when we don't have ceramic on our side because if with the ceramic coating we would be able to blast 95% of it off with no friction from our hands or a wash pad we would be able to remove it strictly with water and pressure from a pressure washer um, but because we don't have ceramic we can't do that which means we have to approach this a little differently um, you can see the rest of the car is dirty, but it's not filthy. Silver obviously is covering up a lot of that dirt, um, but the car is dirty. We would have to do a full wash no matter what. Um, but we're going to do kind of an adjusted wash to make sure we get all the dirt off the car because we have some special dirt like an enormous amount of bugs and rubber, um, which is obviously not typical. Um, the wheels are very, very dirty. The wheels have uh, carbon ceramic brakes in them. So the carbon ceramics don't dust very much. You really don't get a lot of dust from a carbon ceramic brake, but because the car was driven on a track day extremely hard, there is an alarming amount of rubber everywhere. I mean, this thing has like, I probably pulled like five pounds of rubber out of each wheel and like, you know, afterwards when I collected it all, like you can see me pulling some off here. Like that's just rubber from a car, from a tire, right? It just came off and then it flies onto the car, it gets stuck to the paint and it gets stuck to the wheels. The rubber that gets stuck to the wheels is like full-blown rubber. The rubber that gets stuck to the paint is more of like kind of like a skid mark almost. Like it kind of hits the paint and then it like is really hot and it rubs off and leaves like a big rub mark of rubber on the paint. Whereas when it hits the wheels, it actually just sticks to the wheels and leaves like these, these giant like Play-Doh type, you know, like objects that get stuck to the wheel. Um, those are extremely important to remove because when you don't remove them, they act like really big, weird wheel weights and you get like a really wobbly driving car. Like it doesn't feel right. It feels like you have wheel weights in all the wrong areas. Um, in the picture here, you can see all the leftover rubber. Like we have a ton of rubber left over just in our area where we wash the cars. Um, it, was, it was pretty funny. It was pretty crazy to see this much rubber come off of a car. Um, so we kind of documented all those little things. So once we assessed everything on the car and we knew what we were dealing with, um, we started the wash process. So we started with uh, P&S Brake Buster. We use uh, Gion tire and wheel cleaner a lot. So we kind of changed the game up so you guys could see Brake Buster. We offer two of almost everything in the car care store, basically you know, the Noah's Ark of car care. So I, it, the, the purpose of that is because you might get bored with a product and you might want to try something different. PNS Brake Buster and Gion Tire and Wheel Cleaner are both amazing products. There's really almost no difference between the two. The biggest one is that Brake Buster is uh, significantly cheaper than, than Gion Tire and Rubber. Um, and you can also buy a uh, Brake Buster in a gallon from the car care store. So this is a video with PNS Brake Buster. Expect to see Brake Buster more on the channel um, because we've just used Gion Tire Cleaner um, so much. 
but uh, you'll see some wheel woolies being used here. The wheel woolies are very important to kind of pop the rubber off. You can literally see us like popping rubber off the, the wheel here. Um, that's why so much was left in the driveway afterwards because we use this kind of as a wedge to pop a lot of the rubber off. Brake Buster loosens it a little bit and actually makes it pop off easier. Um, also very important, Brake Buster is safe on cars with carbon ceramic brakes. We've talked about that a lot in the past. You do not want to use a product like Iron X on a car that has carbon ceramic brakes like this. That's a very bad idea. It can, because the carbon ceramic brake is porous, it can suck that iron X into it and actually start to kind of corrode the carbon ceramic rotor from the inside out because it's porous. It sucks that liquid in and then it corrodes from the inside out. So you do not want to do that. This car has extremely, extremely expensive brakes. The brakes on this car cost more than some people's cars just as a whole. Um, so you gotta be really mindful of what chemicals you're using on expensive brakes like this. Um, brake Buster is safe. You can use Brake Buster. I don't, you know, recommend that you just stand there for 20 minutes and spray Brake Buster into the, into the rotor. Um, but it, it is safe. Be mindful how you use it and, uh, and it'll be okay. And as you can see in the video here, it does a really good job of cleaning up the, the tires and the wheels and the calipers. Um, but like I said, there was not a lot of brake dust on here to begin with um, because carbon ceramic rotors do not dust very much. We were basically cleaning dirt that would be the same dirt that would be on the paint in conjunction with a lot of rubber and rubber residue that, were, that was on the wheels. Um, and Brake Buster did a really, really nice job of cleaning all that off. All right guys, so in this next little clip here, you're gonna see the front of the 720S. We pressure washed this and the film got a little screwed up and I didn't um, record properly. But uh, this is the aftermath of the pressure wash of the front with all the bugs. So you can see there's a lot of bugs still on the front of this car. Um, this is because there's no ceramic coating on this car. This car has Expel clear bra, no ceramic. This black 570S has the same clear bra from the same dealership installed by the same person, but this car has dual layer seven year ceramic. It's extremely hydrophobic. You're gonna see in the video here that like the paint is wildly hydrophobic um, in comparison to the flat water behavior on the 720S. The, all, all we have to do to remove these crazy bugs, these bugs come from the same racetrack, literally both these guys went to the Autobahn in, in Joliet, and that's where the bugs came from. The other car also went to uh, Road America, but same idea, same bugs, same tracks, same speeds. Um, you're gonna see on the, on the 570S here, this black car, the bugs come right off. All I did was pressure wash it, all the bugs came off. That's why ceramic is fantastic, and this is why you need to pair ceramic on top of Expel Clear Bra or no Clear Bra, just even just a normal painted car with ceramic. We'll have the same situation um, it, it's better protection for bugs because the bugs still indentate into, like they still leave this bad you know, indentation in the clear bra, um, just like a can in paint. The problem is that you scratch the film really bad if there's no ceramic when you're taking it off because you have to go over it more, in, in, in a heavier way if you're not being careful. Um, so that, that was just a really good visual uh, on you know, the difference between PPF and PPF with ceramic on it and why ceramic is so important. Um, now this car, ends up getting washed three times. It gets washed with a foam cannon, fo foamed three times. Um, the front of the car you're going to see is going to get, you know, like washed with a very specific wash pad. This wash pad is only for the front of the car. It's only for the bugs and the rubber and all that stuff because I don't want to take that extra dirt and extra residue of, of, of you know, dirt and rub it onto the rest of the car. So I use a different wash pad on the entire car um, than this yellow one that I used on just the front. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being severe and one being extremely gentle, the average wash is gonna be about a two to a three, um, like two to a two and a half really is how much pressure I would use. In the case of this car, because there's no ceramic and the bugs were still on there and the rubber was still on there, after pressure washing, we have to use some pressure to remove it. That's the only way. So. I'm using like a, like a three to a four, no higher than a four on pressure. You're, you're gonna notice I'm doing a few extra passes. I would normally maybe wash with like one or two passes to remove um, you know, dirt on a car. 
uh, in this case I'm doing like three, four, five passes because I'm using that extra friction and the extra passes to remove the remainder of the bugs. Um, that was safe, it was necessary to do what we had to do to fix all the bugs, but as you see the result, very good. We, we got basically all of it off. I could have polished to remove extra stuff, I could have clay barred to remove extra stuff. Um, just the lesser of the two evils as far as friction and potential damage to the clear bra and the paint was that doing four or five passes was better for the situation than to jump to polish. We did use clay bar and polish and even heated certain areas with a heat gun to remove uh, rubber, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but that was not necessary in the front of the car where we were working. So you have to be very careful in terms of what is going to be like the lesser and the more aggressive version of certain things. Um, but you've seen in, in a lot of our videos where we've talked about, you know, huge rub marks that almost look like sanding marks because somebody rubbed something, for example, a bug, um, that they couldn't get out, so they started to use not enough lubrication with way too many passes, and they basically make like a wet sanding mark, which is a really bad flat spot in the paint. Um, so you have to be mindful of that. You have to kind of adhere to that, and you know, that, that system of least to most aggressive, and when you can catch that you're no longer getting progress from your, your, your least aggressive step, then you go to the next aggressive step for, for some situations. That might be a clay bar for some situations. That might be go to polish. Um, but all of those things, even when you're going up a step, you're going more aggressive, that's better than staying stuck in a least aggressive step and going too far where you actually start adding too much friction, too much damage, and you're getting no results still. You're just damaging the paint surrounding what you're trying to fix, which might be a bug thing or a bird poop thing, um, or even a piece of rubber. Um, so yeah, so just it's, it's extremely important that you, you know, maintain a level of least to most aggressive and know when to move to the next step. So you'll see the entire car got washed. Here's the uh, the other pad we're using. This is the premium wash pad from the website. I'm statusdetailstore.com. Uh, this is a fantastic pad. I used this on the front of the car as well, but I used it on the front of the car after using the yellow pad to remove the heavy, heavy dirt and contamination of the bugs and the rubber and all the you know road debris. Um, so it's okay to use your, your good wash pad on the front after you have minimized that grit that can be on there, like the bugs uh, that we showed in the previous shots, because you don't want to get that stuck in the wash pad and then, for example, clean the back of the car, and now we start swirling out the back of the car because the wash pad has too much dirt in it. Um, keeping your wash pad as clean as possible is paramount. It's extremely important. Um, so after all that was done, the car was washed, like I said, basically three times, foamed a bunch of times, um, everything gets rinsed. And as you can see, as we're rinsing here, look how flat the paint is. Remember that, the 570S, the black car, so, so hydrophobic, incredible water beating. Look at this side shot of this car, super flat. All the water is ex extremely flat because there's no protection, there's no wax, and all of that you know, makes a situation where when we get those bugs on the front, they stick way more to the car and they're way more difficult to, to remove. Um, it's important to note that that clear bra acts like paint so it's even it, you know clear bra is even more porous it's softer than paint paint is harder so when there's no protection and that bug hits it it sticks and digs into the film and then what ends up happening is it can kind of rot into the into the clear bra just like a bird poop can etch paint a bird body uh, i'm sorry a bug body like the guts um, are very acidic so they actually start to like melt into the film and destroy it so it's very very important that you put ceramic on top of your film um, in a lot of cases, uh, a lot of you guys know my opinions on film, in a lot of cases ceramic is just better than doing film. It's also cheaper and, you know, just easier to maintain. Um, but in the end of the day, like, ceramic should be on top of your car no matter what's underneath that, whether it's film or just paint. You'll see in a second, too, that, you know, this is a, like a, technically this was, a, I think, a $250 wash on the website. It technically is a little more money than that, um, just because this was so much more extra work but uh, you know, even on a supercar, like uh, for a 250 wash or a 350 wash, everything is figured in. You can see us washing out the carbon fiber diffuser tray under the under the car in the back. Um, you know, this is something you would never do on like an M3 because it doesn't exist. <laughs> M3s don't have these huge giant 
like $50,000 carbon fiber trays underneath them. Um, but this is part of the wash process on a car for ours. So you, you just come to expect this kind of service when you come to status detail. You don't need to ask, you know, oh, do you clean the under tray and all these little weird spots in the vents? Like always assume that we do that stuff. This is, this is a high level of automotive detailing. We are absolutely going to clean these areas. That's why these little things and tubes and everything you see in the back, that's like the back of the transmission, all of that stuff looks clean because we scrubbed all of that, we cleaned all of that. Um, you know, that's what status detail does. You're going to get a wash on, on all the stuff that's hard to see. Um, and, you know, even though this car is different than most cars, that's just included in, 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 the, in the wash service. So after everything was done outside, we got the car pretty close to being clean uh, and perfect, but it wasn't quite there. So we pulled the car into the shop and then we did a few extra things. Um, we'll talk more about that in a second as it pulls it up in the video. Um, but the main thing was we did, we did all the hard stuff. So all the stuff that would not come off the paint, the hard spots of rubber on the back and some of the stuff on the front, um, we addressed all that in the garage. Also, it's not great to leave a car outside when it's kind of wet like this, so we left the car wet and we pulled it inside the garage um, because the garage is fully climate controlled and it's very hot out in the day we were working on the car. So we're not worried about um, water spots or anything because we pulled the car inside and that way uh, there'll, there'll be no water spots or anything. And also just we're gonna be comfortable because we can have it as a nice 70 degrees with no humidity in the shop when, even when it's 95 degrees outside. Um, so it's just kind of a, you know, you always do your best work when you're comfortable. So being, being super hot outside is not the, the, the way to accomplish your best work, in my opinion. That's why we utilize our, our air-conditioned and climate-controlled shop as much as possible. So you'll see, these are the bottoms of the doors. The bottom door of a 720S or a 570S are very unique because, as you can see here, they get beat up a lot. Some of this is not from the track day, I guarantee it. Some of it is from the track day, but most of it's not from the track day. These doors get beat up because most cars don't have a painted section facing the floor, right? Um, so they get really beat up, and the only way to really clean that is going to be to polish it because they, they just get destroyed. There's no, there's no other way to, to word it. There's no nice way to go about it. The way McLaren designed these cars, the bottoms of the doors get destroyed. Um, and there's no way that you can clay bar that off and fix it, and there's no way you can do any of that stuff. So you wash it to the best of your ability, and then you follow it up with a polish. Um, and the abrasive nature of the polish will even out. It, it, first of all, it pulls all the dirt and all the rubber and everything off, um, which is step one. And then within that step, you just go back and you add more polish, and then you refine it um, by basically that step smooths the film out because the film actually starts to get destroyed. This I'm not a huge fan of clear bra, but if you have a McLaren, you better clear bra at the bottom of your door. It's like, <laughs> that's a really good idea. You should definitely clear bra at the bottom of your door. Um, we, so this, this has clear bra on the bottom of the door and we are polishing clear bra here. Um, but as you can see, the, the only goal is just to smooth it out and get the rubber back off because it gets beat up so bad. Um, but you can restore it to pretty near perfect. If you really get close here and look at it, it's going to be pretty rough still. The, the film gets pretty destroyed. But the value proposition on replacing the film would be insane. You, you, you'd be replacing it like every three months if you're driving the car because the, the door faces the bottom of, you know, the pavement. It, just, it gets hit with everything that comes off the tires and random things that would normally bounce off the bottom of your car, which has a plastic layer. This has paint, which is crazy. Um, but, you know, beautiful when you, when you pop the door open, cool to look at. Um, but, you know, the best way to fix this and the, the only step, in my opinion, to fix something like this is going to be to polish it. Very, very unique situation, very unique problem to a 720S or a 570S. Um, but that's the way you fix it. So you can see we polished the front bumper as well. We did remove most of the problems with the front bumper with just the wash pad. There was small bits of rubber residue. Um, and small bits of damaged clear bra film from bug guts that etched into it. So the polishing here is smoothing out the film from where the bug guts etched and screwed the film up, and it's also removing a little bit of rubber in a few spots where I didn't feel comfortable continuing the process of scrubbing with multiple passes because I didn't want to make that dull spot, so I opted for polish in that area. As you can see, the final result is a very good looking front bumper, especially from where we came from because it was pretty bad when it showed up. Um, but yeah, so you know, we did do some extra steps. Um, so we didn't just wash the front of the car. The front of the car did need a, a, a more aggressive step to get it perfect, and that was polishing. 
Um, you can see the other side of the door here is looking good. And uh, last but not least, here's one more way that we had to remove some stuff. This is a heat gun. This is a sped up process. Obviously, it's going you know super speed. Um, but this stuff was very hard to remove because it's just a high impact area of the back wheel area of the car, the back like fender. Um, so I'm heating that up with a heat gun. I'm checking the temperature with my fingers to make sure it's not too hot. If I can't touch it, it is too hot. And I have jeweling polish on the microfiber towel. Jeweling polish is very low abrasive, virtually non-abrasive. It's almost like a wax, to be honest. Um, and I'm using that very gently and just heating it back up. When the rubber is hot, it gets loose, and then you can rub it, and everything comes off. Um, you can see here, there are divots in the clear bra. This is why clear bra is not your end-all savior. Clear bra still has damage in it, right? You'd have to replace that film if you wanted it to be perfect because the, fan, the, the, the film was damaged. That's the only way to look at it. Um, but anyways, the heat heats the rubber up, the, the rubber gets back to the temperature that it was when it went back on the car, you know, so like it was hot when they hit the car and stuck. When you use the jeweling polish, it's just the right amount of abrasive to pull everything off, to not mar, to not swirl, um, and everything comes off perfectly. This would also be effective on a ceramic coated car if necessary. A jeweling polish will not affect or damage or hurt a ceramic coated car. That's why we use it. Um, just a little quick shot here. This is the back bumper of the 720S that, that has film on it. I don't recommend you put film on the back of your 720S for a, many different reasons, but the main one is that the rear top mount exhaust will burn your clear bra. As you can see here, this, this film has been burnt. Um, a couple 720Ss have caught on fire from stuff like this, maybe not necessarily from the film, um, but be, uh, be very conscious of that. If you have a, a McLaren of you know top mount and rear mount exhaust, um, you don't necessarily need film back there, so I wouldn't recommend adding literal, literal fuel to the fire of uh, potential problems for the back end of the car. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up the video today on the 720S. Um, if you liked this video, please give the video a like, and also please subscribe to our channel. Um, if you don't already follow our Instagram account, check our Instagram account out. We do a lot of awesome content on there. We do a lot of awesome um, Instagram stories, which I think are really, really well loved by our, our fans over there. Uh, we, we kind of pave the way for a lot of our videos and content on YouTube through Instagram. I love doing polls and interacting with my fans and followers. So if you are finding you know us for the first time, definitely check out the Instagram account and definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel. Guys, I have so many more videos coming. I have like some really awesome videos and content that are coming your way. It's just a, a monumental amount of uh, video footage to get through and edit and everything. Um, because if you like this kind of footage, if you like this kind of you know detailing content, I have so much more coming. This is only the very beginning of what this YouTube channel and what this brand is is going to grow into, um, you know, jump jump in on the ground floor. Be, be one of the people that can say, man, I, I, I subscribed to, you know, status detail when they had like 100 followers or 500 followers, and one day we're going to have like hundreds of thousands. Um, I'd love for you guys to be in on the ground floor and remember the, the humble beginnings of, of the channel. And always, you know, check out our car care store. Um, there's a lot of great stuff on there. But, you know, ultimately, guys, if you want to support the channel, if you want to support Status Detail, give the video a like, give the video a comment. That makes a huge difference in, like, how many views the video gets and what the awareness is on YouTube for this video. I would rather you like and comment the video um, then you buy something from the store. It's that you know that's like that's how big of a deal that is for helping us grow this brand uh, on on YouTube in the detailing you know universe. Um, but if you're interested in something, check out the car care store. If you have questions about something, always uh, feel free to you know email me on like the email me on the website and you can also um, reach out in the comments here and if the, the really the best way to reach me if you have a question about anything on the car care store or if you want to schedule something for an actual detail um, go to the instagram page all my contact info is there and if you dm me i'll dm you back almost immediately i'm pretty good about that um, but that's it guys that's going to wrap up the video and I've got a little something special here at the end for all my McLaren fans. I think you guys are going to like it, kind of like an end, an end screen teaser, uh, like in a movie. So uh, definitely watch what comes next. Catch you guys in the next one. You think you have a limit. As soon as you touch this limit, Something happens and you suddenly can go a little bit further.
your mind power, your determination, your instinct, and the experience as well. You can fly very high.